everyone. Welcome back to the garage. Today I want to talk about portable bandsaws and whether it's a good fit for your shop or not. Maybe you've already got your welder and your grinder and you're looking for another tool to add to your collection and you're thinking about a portable bandsaw. I think they are a valuable addition to a home shop with one requirement. I feel like to get the most out of these portable bandsaws, you really need to get some sort of table or mount to put it in because it really opens up the options and the versatility of the portable bandsaw. So this isn't going to be a review on the saw I've got here, but it is a WEN portable bandsaw. It's corded, variable speed. I do have it in a swag table and I do run a foot pedal on this when it's set up like this. But we'll take a closer look here and go over some of the pros and cons of portable bandsaws both with and without the tables. All right, so the first thing I wanna cover is what a portable bandsaw does by itself with no other accessories added. And really all it's gonna be good for is hand holding the saw like this and cutting something lengthwise through this area. Now the reason it's called a bandsaw is because the blade's one continuous blade that's welded together and it looks like a band and it goes all the way around these pulleys. These pulleys turn and that's what moves the blade. So with a portable bandsaw, as you can see here, you're limited to the depth of material you can cut. This one's five and a half inches. Some of them are four and a half. You just got to look at the specs of the saw that you're going to be interested in to see what the capacity of the saw is. Now I would tend to go with the largest one you can find that fits your requirements. Um, it just makes it more versatile. You can use it for cutting more things, larger things. And then if you do put it in a table, it gives you a little more freedom in here. So a portable bandsaw on its own is good for breaking down long pieces of material, tubing, square stock, angle iron, anything that's too long to bring into your shop or bring to the tool you do need to use it on. A portable bandsaw is great for breaking it down. If you're getting 20 foot sticks, you can go out, cut off whatever piece you're gonna need for your job or project with a portable bandsaw so that it's easier to get in and out of your shop and use the other tools you need to use. Another nice thing that a portable bandsaw can do is it makes it very easy to cut a piece of something out so if you've got a pipe or a tube, you can cut a section out and make a repair and then weld it back together, that sort of thing. Other than that, on its own, a portable bandsaw can't really do much else. Um, it's not super accurate being handheld. And like I said, you're limited to the capacity of materials that you can use in a saw like this. So just about any major power tool brand is gonna have one of these saws available, if not multiple. I happened to choose the WEN. It was right around $100. It had all the specs I wanted. It's got a nice big five and a half inch cutting capacity and it is variable speed. It'll do 60 to 420 feet per minute and it's got a built-in light. So that makes it nice and easy to make your cuts. The only minor gripes I've got with this saw are one, the, the weld on the factory blade was not perfectly flat, so you'd feel it catch the cutting through metal. It still cut fine. It just was one of those annoyances. Swapped out a different blade. It's been fine ever since. And the only other issue is that down here on this wheel, the blade doesn't ride perfectly flush and on the wheel all the way. It hasn't caused any issues up to this point, um, but it is just one of those things that it'd be nice if it rode fully on the wheel. Now you can get a cordless saw if you do a lot of junkyard salvage type work or you do need to take it out to a metal shed to cut down larger stock. I chose to get a corded one because I knew I'd be using it in the garage and around the house. There's not much of my yard that I can't reach with an extension cord. So I stuck with the corded one and saved a little bit of money that way. The cordless ones do get kind of pricey. Like I said, this one was right around $100. Cordless ones from the big brands, you're going to get up into probably the $200 to $300 range, if not a little bit more, depending on what brand. And just so you know, this plate here did not come on this saw. This is actually the insert that goes into the swag table, which we're going to take a look at next. And real quick, before we start talking about putting this into a table, I just want to show you how easy this swag table is to get this saw in and out of it. It's literally one thumb screw you can undo by hand. Uh -huh. 
And that's it, now it's in the table ready to use. So here's the saw put back in the swag stand. And I really feel like to get the most value out of your portable bandsaw, you really need to have some sort of stand for it. There's a lot of great DIY options as well as commercially available options. I chose to go with the swag table because it's got a couple nice features as well as being still portable. I can still take this outside since it's on a stand that's got legs. I can take it outside and work. I can move it around the shop. And I've become a bigger and bigger fan of having tools that can move to the work versus having to move my work to the tools makes everything a little bit easier and quicker. So one of the features that's gonna be a little bit difficult to do on a DIY option is this table's got two miter slots in it and that allows you to use a miter gauge. You can use it on this side. There's also one over on the other side. So this will allow you to get nice straight 90 degree cuts as well as 45s and any angle in between there depending on what gauge you end up getting. This gauge happens to be one out of an old table saw that I had that no longer worked. And it works fine. You can see here that it was a little bit wide so the blade did cut this little end off. It still functions fine. And that's one of the benefits of having a metal saw. There are a lot of options out there when it comes to miter gauges. Swag has the Incra. It is a little pricey, but it is a very nice miter gauge. Another nice feature of having a table is in addition to being able to do straight cuts and angled cuts, you get repeatability out of a table like this. Because you have this, you can get repeatable angles and things like that. Um, you can also set up a jig if you wanted to, to cut a bunch of stuff to the same length without having to measure every time. Now, since it is a bandsaw and you've got a table, you can also freehand cuts, do curves, as well as cut out anything you draw on the metal from a pattern or otherwise. Having a setup like this, a table saw in a stand, is going to get you closer to repeatability that you don't really get with an angle grinder. I mean, you can, but it's more difficult with a grinder. And then with a grinder, you've also got that four and a half inch blade that you've got to take into account when you're making your cuts. You're gonna to have to cut outside a little bit, go beyond where you need to stop in order to get all the way through the metal. So the portable bandsaw on this type of table kind of eliminates that. As you saw in the previous clip, this plate stays mounted to the saw and one thumb screw will get this in and out of the table. So it's very easy to go from this setup back to the portable bandsaw setup that you can use by hand. Another nice feature is this has legs. You can bolt it down if you need to, or you could build it into a work surface. One thing that I like to do is every once in a while, I'll put some paste wax on here buff it in and then take it off. That allows these miter gauges to slide a lot easier as well as your steel across the table. One other thing I highly recommend if you're gonna put it in any table. So basically on a saw like this, you've got a trigger back here that turns it on and off and I've got a piece of Velcro around there that's always on. That allows you to plug it into a foot pedal switch like this. That allows you to use both hands to guide your metal and use your foot to control the saw. Otherwise, you'd have to reach behind, turn it on, and be constantly running, turn it off. The foot pedal makes it a lot safer because as soon as you're off the pedal, it's turned off and you don't have to reach around to the back of the saw or anything like that. I will say that this swag table is a little pricey. Currently, it's sitting around $170, $180. I'll link that in the description below as well. For what you get, I think it's a good price. It's just, you gotta take that into account when you're buying a saw for $100 or more, depending on what you want. You have to add this additional $180 to that price. It can add up pretty quickly. Now there are a lot of DIY options out there if you look around. And Swag also offers a table, basically it's just this plate in the center, a little bit bigger, and it'll clamp right in a vise so you don't have these legs or anything and then that plate stays mounted to the saw at all times, and you just clamp it in your vise when you need to use it, and then unclamp it out of the vise when you wanna hand use it or put it away. And that can be a good option. It's quite a bit cheaper than one of these table setups. The downside to that is you need to have somewhere to clamp it in order to be able to use it, and I chose to go with this one, like I said, so I can take it to the work or outside and not have to worry about that. So to summarize the video, 
and my thoughts on portable bandsaws. I don't think that a portable bandsaw on its own is a tool that's worth adding to a small shop because a lot of what a portable bandsaw can do can be done with a grinder. But if you have the money available to get some sort of mount or table for the saw, then I 100% think that it is worth having one of these. They're so versatile and you can do a lot with them once you get something to mount them in. It's gonna open up a lot of repeatability and it can come in handy for a lot of projects where you need to make things like gussets or even pieces to fill in the end of any sort of tubing you can cut out on here. Sometimes with a grinder cutting out little small pieces to fill the ends of tubes and stuff can be really difficult. With this, you've got, I mean, you can use this just like you would any other bandsaw with the limited capacity of the porta band. And it doesn't take up any floor space. You can put it on a bench or a table like I have here. And it really, when you're not using it, you can take this whole thing and put it down underneath your workbench or put it away in a cabinet somewhere and it's not gonna be in your way for other things. So like I said, I didn't want this to be a review of this saw or this particular table. This was just meant to be my thoughts on the portable band saws in general and whether or not it's worth buying one as a garage or home user that may dabble in metalworking or have a small workspace. All right guys, thanks for watching. I hope this video gave you a little bit of insight on what are the pros and cons of the portable band by itself and with a table. And hopefully it'll give you some direction on where you should go. And I just want to reiterate the fact that I think if you're buying a porta band, you almost have to buy some sort of mount or table for it. It just opens up so many possibilities besides just cutting long stock down. So definitely put that in your budget if that's something you want to go with. Check out some other videos. And I am going to set up a Discord server. Actually, it is set up already. I just haven't posted the link anywhere yet. So I'll post that in the description below. Let me know if you guys would be interested in seeing a live stream in the future, something I've been throwing around trying to figure out what all I need to do as far as my setup here in the garage goes to make that possible. And let me know in the comments. Thanks.